So I was watching the Final Fantasy XIV FanFest live stream, and I was anticipating surprises. And we got a few. We got a collaboration between Final Fantasy XIV and Fall Guys, where you can play as your favorite characters in Fall Guys. And then in Final Fantasy XIV, there's going to be an update in the Gold Saucer with some antics that are going to be very, very interesting to play within the world of XIV. I'm thoroughly looking forward to that. But what I did not expect from this keynote whatsoever was the head of xbox phil spencer coming out on stage alongside kiryu san the ceo of square enix announcing final fantasy 14 is now coming to xbox and not only that kiryu san stated that wherever possible they are going to be bringing future square enix games to the platform of xbox and in my view that is just a great w in itself but I wanted to talk about that in today's video. So with that all being said, what is up guys, Jen here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Got you covered with timestamps in the description. So if you wanna to skip to a certain subject matter at hand, cause I'm feeling that this video is gonna be quite the discussion. You can feel free to watch this video however you want. All I ask is you to like the video, subscribe to the channel and just get involved in the comment section down below. So let's just get into it. I wanna kind of be a little bit selfish and just kind of give you my perspective on this. I primarily play on PlayStation. That's just a choice I make. I guess to a certain extent, you probably could call me a Sony fanboy, but I've been playing PlayStation since its inception back in the late 90s and i just stuck with it yes i own a nintendo switch and yes i own an xbox but i primarily play the games on playstation and with the subject matter at hand being you know i've had access to a lot of square enix games coming out to the platform on the playstation but i'm one of these people that don't get involved in the console wars don't kind of engage with people that really want to fight their case I just want my games that I enjoy to be enjoyed by everyone wherever possible. And I just kind of want to use this video as a discussion for us all just to see if we can get to the bottom of where Square Enix is at. Where is going on with Square Enix? Because there's games that come out on the Switch and don't come out anywhere else. There's games that come out on the PC and don't come out anywhere else. Or they come out later. They come out on PlayStation. They come out somewhere else later. And some of them come out on Xbox also. Like what is going on and what can we expect going forward with that kind of, you know, really key announcement, that kind of key line are saying wherever possible we are planning on bringing our games to xbox square enix retweeted phil spencer's tweet on where he kind of was really proud of this announcement and i replied to that tweet saying you know there's only good things ahead and that's for everybody not just for those three people on stage for everybody it can only mean good things and that's why I'm wanting to make this video because it is good times, but we wanna go back to the past and see how we got in this mess in the first place. I value your opinions, but I really hope that you guys can keep it clean in that comment section down below and we can just talk and have a bit of a good time with this one. So I've got a bit of a table here of game releases of Square Enix titles and when they've been released. And I've got them in order of release. And we're start, starting around 2019 because I feel like it's a good place to start to try and see where Square Enix started to release the games and kind of talk about it. So we started off 2019 with Kingdom Hearts 3 and that came out on both PlayStation 4 and Xbox, which is expected with it being a big title. Now Final Fantasy IX shortly followed that after being on the PlayStation for two years and we're talking about the mobile port that then came out on PC and then got re-released to everybody else as well. Um, Dragon Quest Rivals, you probably can see these boxes just here on the thingy and if it says yes three times it came out in all regions, if it's just one on the left there it came out in Japan so we'll just kind of skip past that. But Left Alive came out on PlayStation 4, Dissidia Final Fantasy NT came out on Windows, Chocobos Everyone's a Mystery Dungeon Everybody came out on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, skipping Xbox, Final Fantasy 7 finally came and this is the og version finally came out on the switch on the xbox after being on the playstation for around four years i think final fantasy 10 and 10 2 remaster coming out on nintendo switch and xbox one after being on playstation for a while same with 12 coming out on both switch and xbox after being on playstation for a while octopath traveler coming out on windows after being tied to the nintendo switch so a bit of a the mixed bag that we're going for already in 2019 games that are coming out day on date in both systems 
some that have come from the PlayStation to Xbox, some that have come from the Switch to PlayStation, and some that have come from just wherever they decide to release these games. There is no kind of pattern at the moment that I'm noticing. So we got Anunnaki that came out on the Switch and PlayStation PC, skipping Xbox here. Final Fantasy VIII Remastered coming out on all systems, day and date on September the 3rd, 2019. Dragon Quest S coming to Nintendo Switch. Romance and Saga coming out to all systems, day and date on November 11th. Final Fantasy XV coming out on Stadia, okay. First um, departure, Star Ocean coming out on both PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. And we'll see a similar trait when it comes to Second Story because that's just coming out on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation as well. I think it might be also coming out on PC. Dragon Quest Builders coming to Windows, I think after being on um, Nintendo Switch maybe and PlayStation. I might be wrong. Kingdom Hearts series finally coming to Xbox. Um, a year after Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out, which was great. A lot of people were happy that it finally came to Xbox. Final Fantasy VII Remake coming to PlayStation 4 in 2020. Trials of Mana coming out on Switch, PlayStation 4 in 2020, as well as Windows. Um, Octopath Traveler coming to Stadia. Uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles coming out on both PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch, skipping the Xbox. Kingdom Hearts uh, Melody of Memory coming out on all systems day and date dragon quest 11 s now coming out from this with it being originally on the playstation before the s version going to switch with the s version and now the s version coming back to playstation alongside pc and xbox it's very confusing isn't it uh, collection of saga coming to the nintendo switch and staying on the nintendo switch Bravely Default 2 coming to the Nintendo Switch and staying on the Nintendo Switch. Dragon Quest S coming to Stadia. Octopath Traveler coming to Xbox but not coming to PlayStation. Balan Wonderworld, we'll just skip through that for the time being. Kingdom Hearts is finally coming to PC after going to Xbox and then being on PlayStation before that. Kingdom Hearts 3 also coming to PC along with Melody of Memory, so Kingdom Hearts was now accessible on all systems, which was nice to see. Saga Frontier coming on Switch and PlayStation PC. Uh, Nia coming out on PlayStation, Windows and Xbox coming to all of them. Obviously, A Realm Reborn coming to the PlayStation 5. Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate coming to the PlayStation 5. Legend of Mana coming to Switch and PlayStation. You can see the pattern as we kind of going through the years here that there's some releases that come out on all and there's certain franchises that have been tied to Nintendo Switch. I think Dragon Quest is a good candidate to say that. And then when it comes to like Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy is all, all over the place. You would expect that it would come out on PlayStation first and then come to other systems. But as you can see, as we're scrolling down here to the Pixel Remasters, the Pixel Remasters came out on Windows first and we didn't get them on PlayStation until um, the following like two years from when the pixel remasters first started coming out so we've got dungeon encounters coming out on playstation 4 and Xbox, uh, uh, playstation 4 and switch skipping xbox and we, we'll skip through a few more of here babylon's fall r.i.p uh chocobo gp being tied to the switch triangle strategy being on the switch and i think it's, it comes out on um pc eventually stranger of paradise coming out on everything chrono cross coming out on everything um, Live Alive being tied to the Switch, and then of course it came to PlayStation and X, uh, PlayStation and PC. See, it's so confusing because of the way that they're handling releases. What contracts are being distributed somewhere? I think that's what it comes down to at the end of the day: is contracts and maybe the studios that are working on it, maybe the engines that they are using. Maybe it's easy to develop for all systems. It's like, for example, Dealfield Chronicle is now released on everything, and it was day and date. Um, same with Star Ocean, The Divine Force, which is questionable because the first one didn't, first Departure R didn't come out and Second Story R isn't coming out either. So really confused here. Harvestella obviously being tied to Switch and PC and not coming out to other systems. That could change in the future. Who knows? Tactics Ogre Reborn being on PlayStation and Switch and not coming off there. Romance and Saga being on Switch and PlayStation and not coming out, even though we had the, like the. I don't, it's so confusing. Like as I'm going through this, I'm really questioning where they are going with. And a lot of people will probably say, "Well, they're chasing the bag." I just can't quite put my finger on that yet. Then we've got Crisis Core Reunion, which is coming out on all systems, and but it was very confusing because Xbox doesn't have Final Fantasy VII Remake. Spoken being a PlayStation exclusive. 
Theatre Rhythm only coming out on PlayStation and Switch. Octopath Traveler skipping Xbox, even though Xbox has the first one, but PlayStation doesn't have the first one. All the Pixel remasters coming to Switch and PlayStation and skipping Xbox. You know, just going through here and then the releases that are coming up, obviously, we've just got Dragon Quest Treasures to PC when it's been tied to the Switch. Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dice coming out on all systems. And then you can see here Star Ocean The Second Story R coming out on all systems except Xbox. Dragon Quest Monsters just being tied to the Nintendo Switch. And of course, just the announcement of Realm Reborn coming to the Xbox. So just going through that list just kind of still leaves me in like, where are Square Enix going with their game releases? Why are they so sporadic? Are they chasing the bag? I don't know. But I think that we can all agree, ever since we've got the new CEO in Kiryu san that he has been, you know, very concentrated on making sure that the experience has come out in many ways as possible. He stated in the Final Fantasy 16 launch stream, which is also like mind boggling because Jim Ryan appeared on that and he was like, we're working closely with Square Enix and that relationship is like airtight. And then a month later, you got Phil Spencer on the stage with Kiryu-san. So I don't know, I, I assume that the Final Fantasy 16 exclusivity was set in stone a very long time ago when the old CEO was in town. But the new CEO in Kiryu-san, he really wants those games to just be played everywhere and you know he was there in person with phil spencer that is a big moment that picture of all three of them is a big moment and a sign of things to come and that can only mean good things like i've gone through all these games and i'm still like in awe of like did i have a plan coming into this video did i know that i was gonna like, learn something going through these games no i'm still in the unknown but i'm excited for the future and i'm excited being a final fantasy 14 player that more people get to play final fantasy 14 whether it's 10 years later who cares people are starting this game left right and center i don't think you'll be missing out and feel like you need to catch up you've just got a great experience on your hands there but ultimately where are we with Square Enix and Xbox? I think it's just good times ahead. I think we're going to not see anything in development this year and maybe the first half of next year. But once Final Fantasy XIV has rolled out on Xbox, I'd say come back this time next year. I would see Xbox being announced with those games. You know where like if they were to announce Final Fantasy IX Remake, I would expect it to say... PlayStation, Nintendo, and Microsoft. That is where I am with it. But it's only, I just wanted to kind of make a video to kind of put the conversation out there. I know that we may have just gone through a load of games and just talking about release dates and getting very confused as we we'll, as we were going along. But I'm hoping that we can have a nice civil discussion on what we think uh, without any of the console war antics in the comment section down below. Uh, thank you for your time a bit of a sporadic video no real plan to the madness but a conversation has been created nonetheless thank you for your time and until next time I'll catch you on the flip side